Hi, Pete here from Club Engineer. In the previous talk through, we wrote two single sensor line following programs. One that'd follow the left hand side of the line, and one that'd follow the right hand side of the line. We also asked you to modify your robot with two sensors. Now we're going to look at the algorithm and write the code so the two sensor robot will follow the line. But before we get started, let's have a look at the finished program running. The robot will successfully detect the left hand hints, the right hand hints, and it will navigate all the simple line tiles. The two sensor robot is a lot faster than either of the single sensor robot. Now, we want to have a think about the line following algorithm we're going to use. Remember we have a, a two sensor robot, so we have to be scanning both sensors. I've got the MS Paint up here to rough out a, a quick drawing of, um, of the, the rescue um, the rescue tiles. So if I draw a rectangle and uh, fill it in like that, we've got a um, we've got a line to follow. Now if I draw a circle uh, over here, that can represent, say, the left-hand uh, light sensor. And if I draw another circle here, that can represent the right-hand light sensor. So you can picture here we've got the situation where the robot is, um, in fact I can draw the robot, let's say that's the robot body in there. We've got the robot straddling the line with sensors either side, both of them seeing white. So that's the first possible combination. Both sensors can see white. So I'll just illustrate that over here with two circles with white centers. Now, there's another possibility, and that is that the, um, the right-hand sensor is, uh, is over white, but the left-hand sensor is over black. So if I come over here, I'll illustrate that with uh, two circles like that, but I'm going to fill in the left-hand one. Alright, now you can probably work out for yourself what the next possible uh, scenario is and that's with the, uh, the left hand sensor detecting white and the right hand sensor here detecting black. So we'll illustrate that like this. Uh, with the left hand sensor detecting white and the right hand sensor detecting black. Of course there's a fourth possibility and that is uh, if um, the robots at the end of the tile and um, over green. Now I'll just extend this up uh, like this and then uh, let's see draw a um, draw a piece in here so we're at the uh, at the turning point on a tile and there'll be a um, there'll be a hint drawn in here like this won't there. So we'll fill that in like that and uh, it's going to be green in here, isn't it? So of course the trick to this algorithm is to assume that uh, uh, green is just another a shade of black. And in fact it is fairly close to the black if you're measuring just the, uh, just the reflection. So the fourth possibility is that there's one light sensor, uh, better use, change the color, there's one light sensor over here, like that, and there's one light sensor here detecting green. And uh, in reality if you, you know, watch the robot as it's um, approaching these tiles it'll skew slightly one way. So the, um, the fourth possibility is both light sensors detecting uh, dark. One probably detecting um, black and one detecting green but we'll assume they're both detecting black. Alright, so the four possible combinations for the light sensors. Now, you might be interested in the, uh, the maths of this. Um, N, or the number of possible combinations, equals uh, the number of light sensors uh, times the number of um, possibilities equals four. So that's the maths behind the probability. Now, if both light sensors see white, what do we want the robot to do? both light sensors see white, it's straddling the black line like this, it's probably facing forward, it's possibly on a straight section, we want it to go fast forward. Alright, if uh, the left hand sensor sees black and the right hand sensor detects uh, white, what do we want the robot to do? 
uh, we want it to turn towards the black or turn left. Likewise, if the right hand sensor sees black and the left hand sensor sees white, we want the robot to turn right. If both sensors are over uh, a dark colour, uh, possibly one black and one green, we want the robot to stop, then uh, execute the detect green code and then uh, uh, turn based on uh, turn towards the correct d direction. Uh, detect green, then turn. All right, and that's the basis of the algorithm we're going to execute. So let's now s switch over and have a look at the, uh, the code and how we program this up. Before we look at the code, let's once again study our robot. The two sensor robot has the right hand light sensor plugged into port 1, the left hand light sensor plugged into port 4, the right hand motor is plugged into port A, and the left hand motor is plugged into port C. As we saw from our line following algorithm, what we need is a four way decision based on the two light sensors, each light sensor either seeing light or dark. Let's get started with our, with our coding. We'll create a new program. We'll save it with a good name. I'm going to call this uh, Two Sensor Line Following. Capital TWO, capital Sensor, capital Line, capital Following, and save. Now, there are a couple of ways of making a four way decision with the NextG software, but one of the best is with what we call nested switch blocks. If we drop down one switch block, set it to switch based on light sensor number one, and inside it we're going to add another two switch blocks. One on the uh, top sequence beam within the switch block, and one on the lower sequence beam within the switch block. I'm going to set both of those to switch based on the light sensor. The first switch block is going to switch based on sensor 1 and the nested switch blocks will switch based on sensor 4. So when this executes first it will check the value of sensor 1 or the right hand light sensor. If it sees white it'll execute up here. It will check the value on sensor 4. If it sees white it'll execute the code in here. Likewise, if sensor 1 sees white and sensor 4 sees dark, it will execute this code. If sensor 1 sees dark and 4 sees light, it will execute this code. And finally, if sensor 1 sees dark and 4 sees dark, it will execute this code. Now, to control the motors under these four conditions, if both 1 sees light and 4 sees light, we want the robot to go flat out forward. So we'll grab a single move block, we'll set it to control motors A and C, set it to run forward at power 60 for unlimited. If sensor 1 sees light and 4 sees dark, we want the robot to turn to the left by running motor A. So I'll drop down a move block, we will run motor A, and we've learned from experience that we need to run motor C in reverse very slowly. Good. So in, in summary, if lights are one, light sensor 1 sees light and 4 sees dark, we want the robot to turn left by running motor A forward and C in reverse. Now, if light sensor 1 sees dark and 4 sees light, we want the robot to turn right by running motor C forward and running motor A in reverse. Run motor 
C forward and we want to run motor A in reverse. Now, if light sensor 1 sees dark and 4 sees dark, we're probably over a turn hint. Now what do we do under this circumstance? What I'm suggesting is that for the time being, we will stop both motors and we will stop the program from executing. The block to stop the program's execution is under the complete palette, under flow control, stop. That will kill the program and give us the opportunity to study it and to work out what to do. We have one more thing we need to do. We have these nested switch blocks. We need to place them all inside a loop block. Good. Now we will compile, download and run the program and see how it performs. Ah, and we can see that it falls off the first sharp bend that it gets to. Well that's not much good is it? But what we've learned previously is that if a robot's falling off the bend it probably needs some tuning. And there are a couple of things we can tune. The first one is it might not be turning sharp enough so we can rotate the inside wheel faster. But with this robot we're rotating the inside wheel at power 20 already so it's probably not that. It could well be the calibration of the light sensors. So in the next talk through we'll modify our calibration program so it looks at two light sensors and we'll modify our calibration spreadsheet so it looks at two light sensors and enter the values. Good luck implementing the code for the basic two light sensor line following program. The material we're covering in these talk throughs is hard and sometimes in spite of your best effort you may find that you're stuck. Often it only takes a small amount of face-to-face -face help to get you back on track. If you think you'd benefit from face-to-face -face help then open your web browser and type clubengineer.org slash help. You'll see a list of times and places where face-to-face -face help is available. At these sessions you'll get all the help you need to get back on track. You may also meet like-minded young engineers such as yourself for collaborating on projects down the track. Face-to-face -face sessions are run over the school holidays and after school during term time. They're available for all ages from years 5 to year 12. We also run face-to-face -face sessions for teachers and mentors. We'd love to meet you at one of these sessions and learn what you have been building.